balance of powers. sovereign 
judges to be good. When the sovereign judges something to be good, we all accept that judgment as right reason. We substitute the sovereign's judgment for our own. And if we have a monarchy, how do we figure out what that is? It's really, really easy. We ask him, or more likely he tells us, there's not going to be any ambiguity in figuring out what in that commonwealth, in a monarchy, is good. It's what the monarch says. So there's no question. There's no internal uncertainty. On the other hand, in the case of an aristocracy, in order to determine what's good, in order to determine what's valuable, we need to have that assembly of individuals collectively make some kind of judgment. So maybe they vote themselves. Right? And what the vote of the assembly is, is what is substituted for our own individual judgments as good. Now you can see there's a problem potentially right there. And that is, what if the members of the assembly have different views? Well, if they vote on what is good, what the, what the civil law should be, for example, what ends are going to be pursued and prohibited, uh, if they vote on that, well, maybe they'll, there may be, there may be disagreement within the sovereign. And maybe they'll be able to resolve that by the majority rule. But you can see that there's a potential for real danger and instability in an aristocracy. Because the individual judgments of the individual members of the sovereign may disagree, may conflict. And that's bad for the stability of the commonwealth. Even worse in a democracy. So the way Hobbes is, I guess, thinking about a democracy is all the individuals, natural persons, in the commonwealth maybe vote on what laws to pass, that is, what's going to be prohibited, what's going to be allowed. And then we all go along with what the majority decides. That's what the sovereign has decided, what we all collectively have decided. But this is really dangerous. It's dangerous because we're still, we still are counting on our own individual judgments and then requiring people to back away from those and subordinate them to what the majority thinks. So this is the main reason that he thinks monarchy is best. In both an aristocracy and then certainly in a democracy, you have a threat of a state of nature breaking out within the sovereign. That's not good. Yeah. Can I say, doesn't Pablo say that the issue he has with democracy and aristocracy is the frequency with which they meet? Like a, like a monarch thing is going to make a decision, right. but that they yeah. have to convene, and the time they convene is going to be worse than that is feasibility. Sure. So, right. So, this is um, of a piece with the idea of how the sovereign's judgment is to be. There, there is a, there is a, there are a couple of disadvantages of monarchy. Also, you alluded to one of them. So, if we have a natural person as sovereign, there's going to be, mm, I'll say, uh, two problems that we have to worry about: problems with respect to stability, problems with respect to maintaining peace. One of them is what. If we have a monarch, if we have a monarchy, there. So I say again, Hobbes is in favor of monarchy. He thinks this is best, but he recognizes that there are problems here too. And I'm point. I'm about to point to two of them. And I'm reminding you that with a monarchy, we have a natural human being as sovereign, and we all natural human beings eventually are going to what? Die. That's bad news for the stability of the commonwealth because when the sovereign dies, there's apparently not a sovereign anymore. No sovereign or in state of nature. Therefore, um, for Hobbes, if we have a monarchy, uh, lines of su su succession 
are really important to get clear ahead of time. Notice that this is not a problem for a democracy. It's not as much of a problem for an aristocracy. Right? If one or two natural human beings die, there's still, not a, there's, there's still not a problem where sovereignty lies if it lies with everybody who's still alive or with the assembly of who remains. Right? The natural people, natural human beings, still make sovereign. With a monarchy, we got a problem. And so we need to, ahead of time, make very, very clear. This is why he's worrying so much about lines of succession with a monarchy. So that's a problem, but he thinks it can be solved. The other problem is this. The other potential problem is this. How is, imagine we have a monarchy, and if we have a sovereign, the sovereign's judgment is being substituted for that of all of us individually. How is the sovereign judging what's good and bad? How is the sovereign making a determination of what ends are to be pursued and what's going to be prohib prohibited? Remember, back at the ground level, Hobbes is a subjectivist about values. So what each individual calls, what each individual has a desire for, is what he, for his part, calls good. And what we're doing here in setting up a sovereign is setting up his judgment as right reason. That is, we're taking his judgment to be our own, as if it were correct, as if it were objective. Okay, so let me ask again. How is the sovereign judging what's good and what laws should prohibit things? based on his own desires, based on his own subjective ends. Okay, well this is potentially a problem. If his desires conflict with what's to the benefit of everybody in the society. So you remember, uh, in the case of ants and bees, our natural, sorry, their natural desires and inclinations are in conformity with the public good. Human beings, not so much. Well, if we have a monarch, we have a human being, 